His expertise on the online market led him to being a CEO at age 22. Please welcome Mr. Sean C. Good afternoon. Twice introduced. No, I didn't expect the video. Okay pa ba kayo? Yeah. I realize I'm speaking in the most unholy hour. But thanks to the previous speaker, Mr. Arnold, na liven up tayo lahat, no? So, my talk will be about four stories. That's it. No big deal. I just share four stories. Okay ba yun? Yeah. And in all my talks, I only have one rule. That's honesty. If I ask you a question, your answer is yes, raise your hands. If it's no, don't raise it. And at the same time, you can expect the same honesty from me. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. My topic for today is very, something very close to my heart. It's my story, my journey on how I started up my first business. Lahat tayo dito business people. Is that correct? Yes. We all have and run our own business units. And how I started was actually very relevant to sa previous talk, no? Na meron akong adversity in my life. And I'll get to that in a few. By the way, nagustuhan nyo ba yung mga speakers today? Praise God for them. Palakpakan naman natin yung mga speakers today. No? Marvin is a good friend of mine, and uh, he shared about stocks. We learned about grit. I wasn't able to join with uh, Raisa, but I'm sure she imparted a lot of wisdom today. And pa palakpakan naman natin yung sarili natin for showing up as well, no? Ganda ng mga lessons today, ganda. Before I move forward, let's see if my clicker is working. Oh, there we go. All right. I authored the book CEO at 22. We have some copies outside. And I'll tell you about the special price for your group later on. And totoong special yun kasi dito ko lang talaga yun ibibigay. I don't share it to, to, to other people outside. I founded four companies. My first baby is SEO Hacker. Sino dito familiar with SEO? Search engine optimization. Okay, we have a few. For those who don't know, dahil medyo itatakal natin yung topic konti mamaya, SEO is search engine optimization. Pag sinabing search engine, what comes to mind? Google. Do we all use Google? Pretty much everyone, no? Pag may tayo, product, service, no? uh, information, Google. Search engine optimization is the art and science of manipulating search results. So, my business is all about manipulating Google para yung nagra-rank are yung mga client ko. Noted ba, noted ba tayo? Kuha tayo? Okay. That's my first company. Sigil is a creative digital agency. Queries is a software that we rent out, much like Netflix and Spotify, di ba? We pay per month. They rent out what? Entertainment, music, and video. Si Queries naman, we rent out surveys, no? Functionality. And then Workplace is a co-working space in BF, Paranaque, where I work and live. These are some of the companies that have featured me in my work mostly in digital marketing and SEO. And if you're wondering, why is a certain logo there? Anong ginagawa niya doon? I will redeem myself. <laughs> no? Para sa mga lalaki, alam na alam natin yan. Uh, basically, they just recorded, uh, uh, what do you say, an interview, asking me, why is SEO one of the hottest jobs for millennials today? Okay. Some of the clients that I work with, most of the clients I work with are Local companies, so nandiyan sila TGP, SM, Mega Sardines, etc., etc. So this is nine years in the making. I'm 30 years old and I started at 21. So, praise God. And my talk is all about how you can do it too. So let's start with my first story. What's in the picture? Banyo, tama! If I lock you for one hour in this banyo, will you be happy? <laughs> probably not, right? You'd probably ha be hot-headed and want to punch me by the time you get out. This photo was taken April of 2017. And this photo, this banyo, is my dad's banyo in his bodega. Sabi nila, pag Chinese ka sa Pilipinas, your family is in either one of two businesses. Textile or hardware? My dad is in hardware. <laughs> so, hardware business, I grew up, elementary pa lang ako, 
pinapatulong na niya ako sa business niya. What did I do? Nagbobodigero po ako. I remember around grade 3, grade 4, I would carry back-breaking loads of pako, wheelbarrow, long pipes, TWRs, yung mga ibang di naiintindihan, mga pieces of hardware po yun. And I would carry them to and from our bodega in our truck for delivery. Why am I telling you this? This is to tell you that I did not grow up in a rich family. I wasn't born with a silver spoon. In fact, this is still how my dad's CR looks like in his bodega. I'm the firstborn son, and he did not force me to help him in the business na. No, so, tatlo kami magkakapatid. I'm the eldest, my brother is next, and then my sister. We all are working in SEO Hacker now. Hindi na kami naka pinilit ni Papang tumulong sa business niya. Where I was during college, I studied in De La Salle University. Sino mga Lasallians dito? Animo Lasall. What did I study? I studied ICTM or Information and Communications Technology Management. Savvy term for IT. So IT po ang inaral ko. And I had one aspiration. It's my dream company during that time. HP. Bakit? Kasi may upper class man. One day, bumalik siya sa, sa Lasal. Sabi niya sa akin, You know, Sean, you should apply for HP. Sabi ko, HP? Why? Sabi niya, Because the starting salary is good. It's 25K. Sabi ko nung time na, Siyempre, college, ba? Di mo pa alam eh. You, didn't, you don't know how much salary you can get. So, 25K doesn't sound so bad. Tapos sabi niya, and they have benefits. And they have HMO. Uy, may HMO. Ano pa, ano pa? They have clothing allowance. Sabi ko, eh, I only owned one pair of jeans during that time and one pair of shoes. Sabi ko, doesn't sound too bad, clothing allowance. Ano pa, ano pa? Tapos ito yung talagang lumaki yung mata niya, no? Parang tuwang-tuwa siya. Sabi niya, tsaka may bigas. <laughs> sabi ko, noted, sige, may bigas. Okay, so sabi ko, HP, doesn't sound too bad. Sige, pag-graduate ko, apply ako dyan. Yan na ang dream company peg ko. And then I had one aspiration. Sino po dito nasa 20s pa? Be honest. <laughs> Honesty is my only rule. <laughs> Dami rin tataas. Okay, 20s. Tatanong ko pa ba yung 30s, 40s, at 50s? Wag na, okay, sige. No? <laughs> nung nasa 20s pa tayo, nung nasa college pa tayo, nung anong dream natin? Lahat tayo may isang dream eh. And that's to buy a car. Tama po ba? Yeah, kaya ang traffic yun, no? Sobrang traffic sa EDSA. <laughs> so sabi ko, sige, calculate ko nga, what if I get into HP and I get the 25K per month salary? Siyempre, akala ko 25K yung makukuha ko. Hindi ko pa na-calculate yung tax, SSS, pag-ibig, fail health. Pag, pag dinedact lahat yun, wala nang 20K. Kulang ko lang 19,000 na lang yun. So sabi ko, what if I do get that? I was so naive, I was thinking 25K makukuha ko. How long will it take me to buy my first car? And hindi pa yung car na gusto ko, ha? I wanted the Mazda 3 kasi nung time na yun, bago yung Mazda 3. Eh. Pero what I could afford lang was a manual Toyota Vios. So sabi ko, eh di ba alam naman natin, pag manual ang dinodrive mo dito sa Pilipinas, your feet will die, an early death, no? Nauna pa mamatay yung paa mo kaysa sa'yo, di ba? So, it would take me five years. Five, is five years a long time? Yung iba hindi sure. Yes, no? Five, is five years a long time? Okay. Sabi ko, five years, ang tagal bago ako makabili ng kotse. 25 na ako. Okay? So sabi ko, how can I... How can I expedite that? How can I make it faster? No, to, to buy the first lease of the line, Vios na manual. But I had a problem. My problem, I had an addiction to computer games. Doon sa mga line of 20s dito, mahulaan nyo ba kung anong game yun? Ba, ang galing ha? Dota. Dota 1. Hey, I was part of this team called Mineski. I don't know if you know Mineski. But... Nagsimula po kami sa Lasal. Ang tawag po sa amin dati, Microsmith Boys. And adik na adik ako dito sa Dota. So much so that I failed 28 units. <laughs> Lasal wanted to kick me out. Literally, the dean called me one day and said, you have 28 units, your chances of graduating is slim, and your chances of getting kicked out is high. So I woke up to that reality. And you know, most of my failures were not because of my academic difficulty. 
It was because I cut classes. Puro FDA. Failure due to absences. Yan ang nakalagay sa report card ko. 28 smiling faces. And when I checked my heart, sabi ko, bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba cut ako ng cut? Ang mahal pa naman ng isang unit sa Lasal, no? And I realized I didn't like IT. You see, when I applied for Lasal, I passed three subjects. Comsci, IT, and Literature. Tapos, when push came to shove, I needed to decide because Lasal was going to put me in one of those. Sabi ko sa parents ko, you know, ma, you know, pa, I think I want to take literature because my passion is in writing. Typical Chinese parents, ano sabi nila, wala ka dyan, walang pera dyan. Mag-IT ka na lang. So, nag-IT ako. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, ah, IT, baka meron namang computer games development doon. Something that I also might like. Wala pong computer games development. Maraming computer games. Kaya bumagsak ako na marami. <laughs> and I realized this quote by Albert Einstein was something that resonated with me. And he says, everybody's a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its life thinking it was stupid. And I felt like I wasn't studying what I really was made for. IT wasn't something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. My second story for you, what happened after I graduated. So, I finally graduated and I got into HP. The only company I applied for. What happened? Interview. Carpeted floor. Dimly lit room, long table, three people seated on the other side. I entered that room. Kabado. Sabi nila sa akin, Mr. C, please sit down. So I did. You know the first thing they asked? Please show us your transcript of records. Oh, di ba? So nilabas ko na yung papel, binigay ko sa kanila. And at that moment, I knew there was no way they were gonna hire me. 28 smiling faces. But one of the miracles of my life is I got in. Transcript of failures po ang pinakita ko. But they hired me. It was a miracle. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I don't know what came into their minds. Were they drunk, hungover? Were they high? I don't know, right? Kasi <laughs> for me, ah, why would you hire a guy with 28 failing units? Kahit lasal pag graduate yan. And dami naman naming IT graduates eh. May AMA, may STI, may Ateneo, may UP, FEU, UE, you name it. Ang daming IT graduates. You can hire from any one of them na walang 28 failing units. Pero ako pa yung kinuha nila, no? Hindi ko alam. It was one of the miracles of my life. But here's the thing. Milagro na nga siya sa akin, eh. But you know how long I stayed? Five months. Is five months a long time? Who here has ever been employed? Sino dito ang five months lang kayo nagpa-employ? <laughs> no? Wala nga amin. Ako, konti lang meron. Konti. Five months is a short time. Well, hindi pa nga ako umabot sa six months probation eh. Di ba? And then, I quit. Why did I quit? HP is a fantastic company. They have a fantastic culture. They pay well. But why did I quit my job? He, do you want to know? All right. I didn't like the job. It was my dream company, but not my dream job. There is a big difference, and you shouldn't stay if it is not your dream job. Okay? Follow what you want to do. Be excellent at it, and then success will follow. Sabi ko kanina, di ba? Writing. Yan ang passion ko. And I realized that early on in life. I think I was 12 years old when I realized I loved writing. All I wanted with HP, obviously, was the bigas. <laughs> Just the payout and the perks. That's it. And if you work for the payout and the perks, you're not gonna last. Because inside, you know you're doing something you're not made for. My third story, how I, become, how I became CEO. I love writing, put me in a box, give me a pen and paper, and I would write the entire day. One of my bucket lists is actually to publish one book. 
And I have already been able to do that by God's grace. And, and I do plan to publish more. But uh, this one, thank you, thank you. This one is really the heart and soul of all I've done until I made SEO Hacker into a good company, sustainable company. So it's a, it's a very heartfelt book for me. No? I started a blog named God in You. I'm a born-again Christian. I attended CCF with my parents when I was young. So actually, if you ask me, Sean, kailan ka naging Christian? I don't really remember. Kasi bata pa lang ako, ang naaalala ko na Christian na sila mom and dad. Pero alam ko rin na before, Catholic sila. Kasi I have some recollections of Catholic, going to Catholic churches. Eh. So I wrote about my faith in the God in You blog. By the way, the God in You, the God in you blog, hindi na siya existent, no? Niredirect ko na lahat dun sa seanc.org, which is my personal blog. Nandun pa lahat ng articles. So if you wanna look for it, puhay pa naman yung articles. And then, I was writing in this blog about my faith, philosophy, apologetics, you name it. From the heart. Of course, when you're a writer, you write from the heart. But the problem, when I checked my stats, not a lot of people were reading my stuff. Only three people read my blog every day. Marami ba yun? And you know the problem? I know who they are. My brother, my mother, and my sister. <laughs> so, sabi ko, oh no, I'm writing my heart out, not a lot of people reading. How do I increase my readers? So I asked Google, Google, what do I need to do? What do I need to learn in order for my readers to increase? And ang sabi ni Google, do SEO. This thing called SEO kept popping up my radar. So let's rewind a little bit. I just graduated, worked in HP, started the God in You blog. By the way, to start a blog, magano lang? 1,300 pesos. May blog ka na. Ikaw na may ari nun. Kasi 500 pesos per year yung domain name, seo-hacker.com or shanzi.org. 500 pesos per year lang yon. 800 pesos per year yung hosting, kung saan may lalagay yung files, yung articles, yung pictures. So, 1,300 pesos, I kid you not, is literally my capital. Okay, that's how I started. This thing called SEO kept popping up. So sabi ko, oh, Google, ano ba yung SEO? Aralin nga natin. Search engine optimization. It's the art and science behind manipulating search results. So, for example, kay The Generics Pharmacy, which is a long-time client of mine, pag sinerch nyo gamot sa ubo, gamot sa sipon, trangkaso, almoranas, pigsa, number one siya. Bakit? Kasi yung mga taong nagahanap nun, may sakit na sila or may sakit yung kamag-anak nila and bibili na yun. And kung TGP yung naunang nakita nilang website na tumulong sa kanila, saan po sila bibili ng gamot? Sa TGP, drugstore. That's what I do for companies and that's what I did for the God in You blog. Only in that blog, I answered questions about faith, about philosophy. And it was shared widely. But my journey to turning it into a business wasn't smooth sailing. So, nagawa ko siya for the God in You blog. Good, dumami yung readers ko. Pero paano ko siya ginawang business? Here's how. It started when I finally graduated. So, my dad, who was so happy that he doesn't need to pay for more tuition fees, <laughs> took me to Hong Kong as a grad gift. And in that trip, nasa isang cruise ship kami papuntang Macau. And may isang katabi kong babae na hindi ko kilala, pero feel chai din siya. Tinanong lang niya ako, so, what do you do? Small talk lang. Tapos sabi ko, uh, I'm supposed to go into HP next month, February to eh, 2010. March 2010, nagtrabaho na ako sa HP. And I do a little SEO on the side, gumanon ako, thinking na, eh, baka may, you know, sabihin ko na rin. Pero no one in my circle of influence knew what SEO was. No one had an idea. So nagulat ako nung sinabi nitong babae na to, SEO, kailangan niya ng uncle ko. Sa Philippines. Ito sabi ko, what does your uncle do? He owns the biggest scuba diving company in the country. Sabi ko, really? Ito sabi niya, I'll refer you to him. So more small talk, but at the back of my head, ang inisip ko na, she will probably forget about me. Nagkita lang kami doon, wala naman akong company, wala naman akong website, wala naman akong DTI permit. 
No? Freelancer lang ako noon. Tapos we met at what? At a vacation. We'll buy our pasalubongs, we'll go home, unpack our bags, give our pasalubongs. What are the chances that she will remember me? There's no way. But as chances may have it, as God would have it, she referred me to her uncle. And it, it was true. He owned the biggest scuba diving company in the Philippines during that time, Scuba World. One day, my phone just rang. Is this Mr. C? Yes. Can you please come and present to my office? Okay. Yun lang. He signed deal, $1,000 a month. And you know, yung dala ko pa nun, short band paper, tapos isang kopya lang ng contract. Huwag nyo gagawin yun na. Lahat ng contract dapat long band paper, tsaka at least three copies. Okay? Ganun ako ka, walang alam nun. No company, no registration, no official name, no logo, nothing. So at the back of my head, I was also thinking, this guy can shout at me and just kick me out and I would go home with my tail between my legs ashamed. Kasi wala akong mapresente. But I took guts and I showed up, presented with whatever I could present during that time. No real portfolio. And he signed. And I ranked him number one for scuba diving Philippines. Thank you. Praise God. And he got a lot of businesses business out of it. No? Daming kliyente nag-inquire sa kanya. The rest, as they say, is history. As CEO Hacker, we are now over 45 people in the team, all in-house, and we work for some of the biggest brands in the country and abroad, as you have seen earlier. So, praise God, praise God. By the way, trivia, lahat po kami millennials at centennials. Wala po kaming Gen X or baby boomers. So, may two people lang na mas matanda sa akin sa team, the rest mas bata na. And mahirap, mahirap. Kasi ibang iba yung dynamics eh. No? But if you also run a team of young people, you have to study how we think and what's important to young people. It's no longer pension. It's no longer retirement. It's experience and growth. Okay? But another person would talk about it no? today or, to, or, or next time. So, my last story for you. How SEO Hacker grew? So, nandito na tayo, nakapagsimula na tayo, nangyari na yung business, paano natin papalakihin? The secret is hard work. Nothing in life worth doing is easy. Nothing in life worth doing is easy. Work hard. And for the young people here, if you think you have an advantage, kasi mas techy ako eh, mas techy ako kaysa doon sa mga nauna sa akin, don't think that way. Technology is the greatest equalizer. Now, someone who is homeless but has access to internet from his smartphone can know as much as you. And what will differentiate you from them is if you work hard. So when I hire people to join my team, I always make it a point to see if they're willing to work hard. And it's so timely nga na grit yung topic kanina because that's our number one core value, grit. Okay. So, every day, here are some of the things I do. I read blogs and books. And hindi po ito yung mga 4chan, 9gag na blogs. Ha? Ito po yung mga blogs na talagang relevant sa industry ko. Search Engine Journal, Moz, Conversion Excel, yung mga ganyang klaseng blogs. So, I read a lot. I study. I feed my mind. Second thing that I do, I write a lot. Now, we're doing podcasts. We're publishing it. So, we produce a lot of content. Next, I manage cash flow. Marami, marami nagsasabi kasi, ah, you know you want to start a business? You know what's the most important thing? It's passion. No, it's not. It's not passion. Kahit sobrang passionate ka about something, if your cash flow is negative, your business will die. The most important thing is cash flow. Revenue has to be greater than expenses. The organization is likened to the human body. The heart is the sales and marketing. Yeah? The brain is the R&D department. Tama ba? The hands and feet are the grassroots. And then the blood is cash flow. That's why when we say the company is bleeding, no? that, what does it mean? It's dying. Red. Nasa red na siya. Expenses greater than revenue. Cash flow is the most important thing. So I manage it every day. 
What else do we do? Accounts management. We go to clients. Clients want the sun, moon, and stars. We have to tell them, this is what you paid for. We are on earth. Right? Manage expectations. It's not easy. It's a lot of hard work. Don't think that because we are getting better at what we do, we are be being more successful, that it's going to get easier. To some extent, yes, but there are new challenges on the way. And to those who are scaling up their businesses, alam nyo po yan. Okay, once you've started up, mahirap yon. But when you're about to scale up, palalaki nyo na yung business, ibang klaseng challenge naman. Now, those are the four stories that I wanted to share with you. And this is the meat, the principles behind my leadership. And I will explain to you why leadership is important. First principle is the linchpin principle. This book is by Seth Godin. And he says, exclusivity is important, scarcity dictates value, and in every transaction, there is a value exchange. What does this mean? I'll give you an example. Alam niyo yung brand na Louis Vuitton? Okay. LV, lumang bag. <laughs> How much is one bag? 60,000, 100,000, how much? The most expensive, probably, no? 500,000, maybe a million, right? Maybe. Maybe the most exclusive nila na release, no? Limited edition release, maybe a million. One bag, one million. How much does it cost to produce? Sabihin natin 10,000 pesos. Mahal na nga yun, eh, to produce that bag, but they sell it for a million. How much is their profit? 990,000. You sell one bag, you're happy. Tama ba? Exclusivity. Sarcity dictates value because this is limited edition. Why do people buy it? Why do people buy an LV bag? It's just a bag. Is there free Wi Fi inside? Does it turn into a bicycle? It doesn't. It's just a bag. Why do people buy it? Identity. They want to be identified as someone who can wear that bag, who can afford it. So for that value of identity, they're willing to exchange cash value. Now, I'll give you the other end of the spectrum. The Lugao business. Sabi nga nila, Tubong Lugao. It's a good business. Lugao business opens up in La Salle. Makes, well, makes a lot of money. Right? Let's call it Lugaw Stall A. Makes a lot of money. Someone sees that, oh, kaya ko rin yun. Madali lang maglugaw business. Open sa pride beside it. Lugaw Stall B. Ano mangyayari? Anong unang-unang gagawin ni Lugaw Stall B? Promo. Tama. May nagsabi, promo. Never-ending promo. Di ba? Why? Market share. Now they're going to get Lugao Stall A's market share. So what does Lugao Stall A do? Ah, nag-promo siya. I'm losing market share. Promo din. And it's going to be a vicious cycle. Unless they both come together, shake hands, and say, this slow and no further shall we go, what happens to their profit? Nothing. Bababa ng bababa hanggang mawala yung profit nila. Tama po ba? And when that happens, where are they going to get their profits? Because they cannot increase their price. And they cannot remove their promos. You know where they're going to get it? In the quality and the quantity of the product. Suddenly, yung lugaw, nilagyan ng graba at styrofoam. <laughs> Para mabigat, no? Pagkain ng customer, lasang lupa, lasang graba <laughs> Quality and quantity. That's where they're gonna get it. So what happens to the industry? Suddenly, people say, wag na tayo sa lugaw. May graba yung lugaw eh. May styrofoam sa loob eh. Doon na lang tayo sa makdo or sa tapa. You understand? What kind of business person do you want to be? Do you want to be like the LV business? You sell one bag, you're happy. Or... The Lugao business, where you have a stall, bit-bit mo yung kaldero mo, sanggalo ng tubig at isang sako ng kanin, hindi ko nga alam paano mo bibit-bitin yun eh. 
Di ba? Araw-araw. And early in the morning, you have to make lugaw. And then in the afternoon, you have to serve it to people you don't know. They don't smell good. You don't even like them. But you have to do that every day. And then someone opens up right beside you, eats up your entire profits. What kind of business person do you want to be? This is all about brand building. Build your brand. LV, it's just a bag. There's no free Wi-Fi inside, but they can sell it for one million. Next principle is the purple cow principle. Seth Godin, he tells the story. He was driving by the countryside one day. Sabi niya, there were cows, greens, blue skies. The first cow he sees, majestic, black and white spots, eating grass. Wow, it's nice. Drives on. Second cow he sees, big, black. Almost looks the same as the first one. Third cow he sees, doesn't even matter. It's the same cow. But if I see a purple cow, I would stop the car, go down, take a video, take a picture, and share it with my friends. This principle is all about being remarkable. There has to be something remarkable about you or about your business. If there is none, people will not, mat people will not mind. They will just drive on. How did I apply this in SEO Hacker? We go the extra mile. We don't charge for the little things. Sa digital marketing business kasi, ah, gusto mo upload ko to, ah, gusto mo palitan to, it's charge nila yung clients. We don't do that. But we do charge premium. With the linchpin principle, I applied it as well. We charge premium, but we give exclusivity. Kung si TGP kliyente ko na, hindi na ako pwede kumuha ng generica. Hindi na ako pwede kumuha ng Watson's generics. Also, with the linchpin principle, I do not allow for lowball price. If a client wants to lowball my price, I don't allow it. We have to maintain a certain standard of branding. Okay? Next is the outliers principle. By business psychologist Malcolm Gladwell, he says 10,000 hours of practice, deliberate practice, makes you a master at your craft. Matagal ba ang 10,000 hours? How many, how long is 10,000 hours? Can you guess? Nagka-calculator na iba. <laughs> how long? Any guesses? 160 days? No? 460 days? 460 days? No? Let's talk in years, not in days. <laughs> One year longer? Five years. Okay? 10,000 hours of deliberate, deliberate practice, five years. And as we agreed earlier, five years is a long time. Would you like to know the secret behind shortening that to around three years? Would you like to know? Okay. Work more than eight hours a day and more than five days a week. That's it. Deliberate practice. The story that Malcolm Gladwell uses is of the Beatles. Naabutan pa ba natin yun, the Beatles? Yung banda? Banda po ang The Beatles. Doon sa mga hindi nakakaalam, no? The Beatles, if you didn't know, they started in Europe. That's where they toured. And they played almost every day until they reached 10,000 hours. Sabi nga yung, guitar, yung gitarista nila, halos dumugo na yung kuko eh. Sa haka, laro. They really focused on playing and playing and playing and practicing their craft. And the moment they stepped into U.S. soil and they played, they sounded like no one else because they were masters of their craft. And you know how popular they became. And if you want to be like that, you have to work deliberately hard. When I was starting SEO Hacker, I worked more than 8 hours a day, often 16 hours a day. And I would work on a weekend, sometimes weekends if necessary. Mahirap. I really poured in the hard work. But you saw how many magazines have featured me offline and online. Because you will get noticed if you work that hard. Okay. Oh. Praise God. Praise God. The next principle is about the dip. Let's play a game. I ask you a question, you tell me the answer. Okay, Bayon? 
Okay lang ba bumaba ako sa stage? Kasi gusto ko marinig yung sagot eh. First question. Who is the number one soft drink brand? The number one soft drink brand. <laughs> Hindi pa sure yung iba, no? Who is the number one toothpaste brand? Very good. Who is the number two soft drink brand? Okay. The number two toothpaste brand. <laughs> you iba, hindi na sigurado. Who is the number three soft drink brand? Okay, magsasapa ka na. <laughs> ano? Mirinda? <laughs> Kali? Who is the number three toothpaste brand? <laughs> Kanina, number two si Happy. Ngayon, number three si Happy. No? May mga fans nila Pedro dito. Ah. <laughs> so, what's the point of that game? Number one soft drink brand. You got it right. Coca-Cola. May iba nagdududa Pepsi daw. Okay? Pero kakaunti lang. Number one toothpaste brand. Everyone got it right. Colgate. They own the biggest market share. Number two soft drink brand. Karamihan kilala, Pepsi. May mga iba hindi na sure. Number two, toothpaste brand, close up. Tama. They own the second biggest piece of the pie. But some people were not sure. By the time we, I asked for the third, it doesn't even matter, right? We were all confused. This principle is about being the best at what you do. How I applied it to my brand, if you search for SEO Philippines, arguably the hardest keyword in the entire country, kasi lahat kaming SEO company, nagbabakbakan para sa keyword na yun. SEO Hacker is number one. Why? If you're not number one, <laughs> praise God. If you're not number one, just like the exercise now, people will confuse you with everyone else. And then it doesn't matter. Okay? That's why we had that exercise. And lastly, the Google principle. I'll summarize this na lang. Don't major on the minor things. Don't major on the minor things. What does that mean? In our office, marami kaming millennials. Hindi kami naka-suit, hindi kami naka-tie, hindi kami naka-slacks. No? Wear something respectable. Ngayon, lumipat na kami ng office, nasa building na kami, kaya smart casual. Pero in the early days, my first eight years doing business, the team, wala kaming dress code. Some people will go to work, naka-slippers, naka-shorts, and that's fine. Because we're just working in a big house. That's it. First eight years, I don't major on the minor things. ID, we don't require. Only major on the major things. Huwag na natin pahirapan ang sarili natin. Pero, iba naman yon pag pumasok ka ng office, na naka-short shorts, naka-crop top, lalaki, naka-short shorts, naka-crop top, mahirap yun. Okay? Bawal yun sa amin. Yun talaga, I'll call, call them out. Because that's no longer a minor thing. That's a major thing na. You're distracting. Okay. Invest in your principles now. This is what I'll impart you with. Why? Because your future decisions, 90% of them, will be made by your principles. This is why I shared with you some of my business principles. What does it mean, 90%? Siya, ano yung sabihin yan? Simple. I have the linchpin principle. So if a client comes to me and tells me, Sean, you're too expensive. Pwede bang half na lang yung price? I have an immediate answer. And the answer is no. I don't agonize about it. Hindi, pera pa rin yun eh. Hindi ko na pinag-iisipan. Hindi ko na pinag-aagonizean yung decision. Sino dito married na? Married? Sino dito singles? Okay. Ah, half-half. Alright. For the single people, I have a question for, I have an example for you. If you have a principle of purity, purity, no sex before marriage, and your boyfriend, no, ladies, your boyfriend asks, asks you, Come on, let's go out. Let's do something crazy. What's your answer? 
If you don't have a principle, this is gonna be your answer. No, I don't like. Stop it. And then what will happen? Pag uwi mo, you'll agonize about that decision. No, baka hindi na niya ako love. Baka break na kami bukas. Wala kang principle eh. But if you have a principle, anong sagot mo? Ito lang yung sagot mo. No! Di ba? <laughs> Paulit-ulit. No, no, no. <laughs> because you have a principle. Immediate answer. Mag-break na tayo, but my answer is gonna be the same. In business, it's the same thing. Someday, you will be faced with a question that if you are unable to practice and exercise a principle, will agonize you. What is management all about? In essence, management is all about making decisions. So if I can make faster and better principles, than my competitor, then I will beat him black and blue. And we do have competitors, right? Every business has competition. So it is important for you as a business owner to invest in your principles. Not just life principles, but business principles as well. And how you learn that is through talks like these, through books, podcasts, mentors. Meron naman tayong lahat nun. We live in the information age. Work can be enjoyed. And you know what I realized? In life, you don't need to work in a job you hate to retire with dignity someday. All too often do I hear before, Monday na naman. Thank God it's Friday. Feeling mo, bigat-bigat ng trabaho, you know? And I was young. I felt like work must be such a pain. Work must be so boring. Work must be Something that a lot of people don't like. But doing business, working in the SEO industry, that changed my perspective. I realized work can be enjoyed. Do you enjoy your work? Good. That's a blessing. Because not a lot of people know that, realize that, and live that way. What is retiring with dignity? Retiring with dignity, by definition, is having enough for yourself when you're old and gray, for your parents when they can no longer support themselves, for your children when they grow up and they need your help, for God who demands 10% and for the community. That for me is retiring with dignity. All too often do we hear the middle class ipit. Wala na nga silang pera, kailangan pa nila tulungan parents nila at pinapaaral pa nila anak nila. Mahirap yung ganon. Okay? Have a goal of retiring with dignity. So, to wrap it up, three things you need to be successful. First is God. Nasaan si God dun, Sean? Nasaan si God dun sa buong talk mo? Parang hindi mo naman siya na-mention except for your blog. I'll tell you. When I went to that Hong Kong trip with my dad, and by chance, that lady sat beside me. By chance, she had this uncle who owns the biggest scuba diving company in the Philippines. By chance, she remembered to refer me. By chance, her uncle called me. And by chance, he signed that contract. How lucky can a guy get? As it happens, I do not believe in luck. I believe there is a God who orchestrates everything. Second reason. <laughs> Praise God. Second reason why I say it's God. I have met many successful people and there are two kinds. Number one is successful and happy. Number two is successful and miserable. And I asked each of them one simple question. I asked the successful and miserable person, are you happy? You know their answer? Could be happier. I could be happier. If only my son was this, my daughter was this, my family was this. If only I had this and that. They have vices, mistresses, unfaithful to their family. You see them and you see the emptiness in their eyes. And I told myself, someday if I'm going to be successful, what use is it if I'm miserable? That's the saddest thing. That's the saddest thing. I asked the successful and happy 
people. Are you happy? You know their answer? Could not be happier. One wife, faithful to their family, spends a lot of time with them. Good in business, highly respected. They know there's a life after this and there's a God there waiting for them. And they live their life in light of eternity. Successful and miserable people, they live their life for the here and now. That's it. So I share with you this first thing because you are on your way to success. However you define success, you're on your way there. And what use is it if you end up miserable? Second is guts. Guts is important. To simplify it, it is showing up. As the previous speaker has mentioned, it is just showing up. I had nothing but Google. Hindi ko alam magkano ang SEO noong time na yun. Pinapapresent na ako nung may-ari ng Scuba World. So al- alam niyo ginawa ko? I search in Google, how much does SEO cost? What does an SEO proposal look like? I did not start with a lot of information, a lot of data with a nice office. Yung office ko was a non-air-conditioned attic of my parents' house. It was nothing glorious. And kulang na lang yung proposal na dala ko doon, natapunan pa ng kape. I had nothing. All I had was guts. I went there and told myself, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna do this. And you know, opportunity does knock only once. If it knocks again, it's another opportunity. And offer, often, it's a lesser one. So when an opportunity comes your way, take guts, show up, and do your best. Thank you. And lastly, work hard. Nothing in life worth doing is easy. I'll repeat that again. Nothing in life worth doing is easy. Whether it's your relationship with your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, it takes hard work. Relationship with parents, with your children, it takes hard work. Running a business, it takes hard work. Leading a team, leading even one person, it takes hard work. Work hard. Because if you work harder than the other person, then you've already won the race. That's it. I hope you learned something, no? God, guts, and hard work. Kailangan nyo bang picturean? Tatabi muna ako. <laughs> Ang daming nag, uh, nagpipicture sa atin. Okay? <laughs> and if you want to contact me, if you have any questions, this is my personal email address. Now, I know ang nakalagay dito, 500 pesos. Online, I sell the book for 650. You can get the book for 650 online, but I don't sell. I, I don't sign the online copies. What's in the book? This is chapter one. What I just shared with you. There are seven chapters, and it's all about how I started being a failure in life, being an almost kick out, and being the black sheep in my family, and how I still started SEO hacker, and how I turned it into a profitable company. Okay, Bayon. So I'll, I think we will have a break later on for the book signing. In the meantime, I hope you learned a lot and I want to thank you for your time and for having me here. Thank you, Sir Paul. Also, happy birthday.